your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, David, don't you feel sorry for the people who have to buy their Christmas trees in a store? Mm-hmm. My heart bleeds for them. I didn't ask you if your heart bled. I asked you if you felt sorry for them. No. No? No. What do you mean, no? And you can quote me. I do. I feel pathetic for them. You look pathetic. Just imagine buying a tree in a store when you can chop it down in your own backyard. If you don't hurry up and get dressed, we're not going to have any Christmas tree out of anybody's backyard. Me hurry? Yes, you hurry. You... Besides, acres of farmland are not called a backyard. They are to me, and I'm getting dressed as fast as I can. Well, that's as slow as it can be. Gosh, these shoes are tight. Your feet's too big. Well, oh, darling. There. Whew. So have you decided where to chop the tree down, David? I think a good spot would be the road towards Matthew Warren's place. Oh, what? Mm-hmm. This saw is getting dull waiting for you. Now get your ski pants and sweaters off. Trees will be there just as well in five minutes. I'm not worrying about the trees. Every time you bludgeon me to take five minutes off of my work, it turns into two hours. Two hours? Two hours. You just finished changing your clothes yourself, you know. Oh, I'm ready. Out. I've been oh, ready for 15 minutes. Oh, I think you just think it's husbandly to rush me. I think you just think it's wifely to keep me waiting. How'd you guess? Not hard. There. My last sweater. Oh, my gosh. I'm bundled up like a bag of wool. Well, let's go. That is, if, if you're ready, dear. Well, I'm ready. Oh, I wish Bobby were old enough to realize it's Christmas. Christmas is a nice time of the year for children. Well, you ought to know. I do. It's a nice time of year for everybody, including adults and old men like you. Where did I put my teeth in? Just think, David. Last year, we had to buy our Christmas tree from a grocer's. Oh, how unromantic. Oh, how simple. Listen, it was your, 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 your idea to chop down this tree. I loved you for it, so please don't spoil it. Well, I didn't suggest it for sentimental reasons, the way you seem to think. Oh, much you didn't. I suggested it because I had to clear out the grove down by the road. Yes, I know, I know. Trees are growing much too thick to thrive, and this is as good a time any to start. Of course, I know. And I suppose it just happened that Christmas decided to come the day after you decided to cut down the tree. Pure coincidence. Very sweet of Christmas, wasn't it? No, all right, all right. Think what you will. I I just told you where I stand. You can tell me all you like. I draw my own conclusion. Oh, don't forget your saw, darling. Oh, I have my saw. Oh! Oh, my gosh, it's cold out. You want to go back in and put on another coat? Oh, no. What do you take me for, an orchid? I'm a rugged New Englander. (laughs) You're not much of a New Englander. What do you mean? Yankees are solid people. Not given to being sentimental. Well, I'm not given to being sentimental. No, not much. Gee. You've been cooing about growing our own Christmas tree all day. That isn't sentimentalism. What is? Take care of the ice. You I break your see. neck. I'm not sentimental well, Maybe either. not. Maybe you wanted to chop down one of our own trees because it's cheaper than buying one at the and grocery. I'm not mercenary either. <laughs> and what are you? I have sentiment, which is something no one should be ashamed of. Who said anything about being ashamed? Sentiment. Oh, David, so nippy and cold out. I love it. Funny, I used to hate winter, but I love it now. What caused the big change? You. Me. Just you. Mm. Oh, winter used to be so lonely and kind of sad. Now it makes me feel all brisk and strong. And you are very, very handsome in that old wool shirt. I'm going to have to stop wearing it. It's turning my head. Turn it this way. Now, no monkey business. Oh, We're out to on. chop down a tree now, not for monkey business. Just one little monkey? All right, one monkey to keep you quiet. Oh, I like monkeys. Your nose is cold, very so cold. yours. I guess you're right. I guess when all's said and done, I'm not much of a Yankee at heart. Why not? Sentiment is in the heart, isn't it? Oh, well, it can't be. David, do you think that... Listen that poor crow. Ow, ooh, ooh, my ears feel like icicles. They're freezing. Well, crows don't have ears, so you can stop worrying. Oh, well, then how do they hear? I have no idea. David, that's really something to worry about. Certainly now, you is. have to look it up or something. David, we're not just being selfish about the tree, are we? I told you that that grove has to be thinned out. You're not now, just I... saying that, are you? So I won't think you're sentimental, Let too? Let me count to ten. One, two, three. No, we're here. So see for yourself. Now, take a look. You know, I see how thick it is. I have to admit, it does look pretty thick. Yeah. You win. You win. Which one, David? The tallest? 
or the shortest. How about this middle size one? Oh, I love middle sized everything. You gonna let me hack and chip, no, chop, yes, chip? I'm not. This tree is supposed to look decorative and not scarred up and chipped and chopped. I am a, bit. a very good chopper. How chipper. do you know? <laughs> I just know. From chopping spinach. I no suppose. chipping. <laughs> <coughs> David, would you be embarrassed to say, you know, Matthew Warren or Jeremiah Quigley drove by and saw you chopping a Christmas tree? A pine tree? I would not. You're sure of that? And stop trying to make me self conscious. A man has to supply a Christmas tree when he. When he has a mother-in-law and a wife and a son to plead with him for one. Of course. Oh, I just love it when you tease me when you're being husbandly. Oh, this is nice. This is wonderful. This is Christmas. Oh, for heaven's sake. What's the matter? You, you know, you've started an echo even before you started chopping. That makes great sense. No, no, no. Listen, David. Yeah, somebody's chopping all right. Firewood, probably. We'd only hear Matthew Warner or Jared Tucker chopping. They're the only people who live close enough. Well, they're certainly not the type to chop anything else but firewood. Oh, no Christmas trees for they. They're too hard bit. How can you recognize a person by the sound of his chopping? Oh, I didn't recognize a person. I just recognized who the person wasn't. That's very different, you know. Very. Oh. Well, stand back. Oh, let me have that. I'm help. doing the chopping. You can do the decorating tonight with Mom. Why can't I have any fun? All right, you chop and I'll decorate. No, 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 you better chop, darling. Well, I thought so. And just to make things even, I'll come down with Fritz and bring the tree home in the pickup. You will decorate, young woman. The rest is man's work. Oh, poofal, man's work. Poofal, I repeat. I wonder who that is. It's awfully cold for Mr. Tucker to be out chopping wood, but is there any signs of his coming from over at his place? I suppose you won't be contented until you know exactly who it is. How did you guess? I know my Claudia. <laughs> Mr. Tucker! Hey, oh, Mr. Tucker! <laughs> he sounded like a yodeler. Hey, Oli, Oli! David Noggin! Yoo-hoo! Woo-hoo! It is Mr. Tucker. Let's go over and say hello. Maybe we can give him a hand with his, to- with his wood. Mr. Tucker! Hey! Mr. Tucker, we're coming over! I'm waiting for you, son! Say, David, you better leave your saw and hatchet here. Unless, of course, you don't mind, Mr. Tucker, knowing you have a well, let sentimental Let anybody wife. know what they want to know. I don't care. Oh, leave the saw anyway. He might not understand. You know, Jared Tucker is a chip out of an old pilgrim stone, if there ever was one. Could you be thinking of the Plymouth Rock? I don't know. Could I? I think you could. Yeah, I guess I could. David, I'll bet you that even when he was three years old, he didn't play, play under a Christmas tree. Good heavens. When Jared Tucker was three years old, must have been an awful long time ago. <laughs> what do you think he'd look like 83 years ago? Just as toothless as he is today. <laughs> oh, he's such a funny old man. I love him, I think. What are you folks doing out here on a nasty day like this one? Oh, just uh, uh, taking a walk. That's mighty shrewy stayed to be out taking a walk. Well, you're out, aren't you? That's different with me. I was born just about the same time as the weather was born. We're equal. (laughs) What are you doing, Mr. Tucker? Oh, just uh, chopping some firewood. I thought you did that in your own backyard. You doubt my word, son? No, but uh, this is pretty far for you to carry your own firewood home, isn't it? Oh, there ain't nothing too far when you got a mind and a back to do it. Mm, Guess so. Well, how are you planning to celebrate Christmas? Oh, ain't planning much. Oh, what are you going to give Delilah for Christmas? That sister of mine? Yeah. I ain't give her anything since I passed the cold on to her three winters past. <laughs> that was very generous of I've seen too many Christmases to make a fuss about seeing one more. Maybe that's why you should, because you've seen so many Christmases. I ain't softened with the years. Oh, I'll say you haven't. Oh, feel that wind. Blow you straight out of your red flannels if mm. you don't want to. Maybe out. we ought to get going, darling, before you stick to the ground. I don't feel cold. I just feel the wind. Well, Mr. Tucker, can I give you a hand with your firewood? What do you take me for, decrepit? No, no, I just offered. I'm all chopped. Well, I only see one log here on the ground. That's all it chopped. It ain't no surprise seeing only one when one's all chopped. Well, that certainly isn't going to keep you warm very long. It ain't meant to keep me warm. I don't need much to keep me warm. This parcel of bones can keep their cells warm. That's a pretty no. hefty log, Mr. Tucker. You got any criticism of no, it? No, no, I was just thinking I could walk over to your house and get the wheelbarrow. I bring... got my wheelbarrow with me. Honest, the way you young'uns treat a man of my age, you'd think a man's brains frittered away with his flesh. Well, you got another guest coming. My oh. brains is just getting into high gear. Yep, into high gear. Well, let me help you load this log on your wheelbarrow. Here, let that me give you... kind of handsome log, yeah, ain't that you? that feel better? You have yeah. quite a fireplace for a log like that. log like that took a heap of chopping. Mm, I bet it did. <laughs> a log like that'll burn all night at twelve. Yes, it will, won't it, David? Well, guess you better take it home. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a hand. Yeah, I all will. Right. Still, I can't imagine why you come all the way over here to 
chop one log. Yeah. Get up there. Well, your shed's packed with firewood in the house. Oh, that's there's wood and there's wood, Mr. Norton. Ever hear of that? No, I can't say as I have. I've only heard of wood. Some <laughs> wood's for burning, other wood ain't. New one on me. Uh, what's uh what's this wood for? For burning in sort of way. This here's a uh, log wood is set on fire Christmas night and it burns the whole day and the whole night through. Mr. Tucker, do, do you mean to say that this log of wood is a Yule log of wood? What if case? Oh, nothing, nothing, no. Uh, folks been burning Yule logs ever since a long time past. It's a, it's a tradition. Uh, it's what, what you call it, a tradition. I see, yes. Yes, when folks lived in big stone palaces, they brung in a Yule log, they brung it in with a load of fandangles and hullabaloosies, and set it in the fireplace, set a spark onto it, and when it started burning, why, then it was, uh, then it was Christmas. But, Mr. Tucker, it's so sentimental. It ain't, ain't sentimental at all. It's tradition. It's Christmas, ain't it? Oh, I never said it wasn't, well, no. I've got a right to keep warm before my fire, ain't I? I never said you didn't. So if I'm going to burn a log of wood, it might as well be a yule log of wood, mightn't it? Yup, it might as well. Say, watch the funny look there, son. Oh, you mm-hmm. saying to yourself that old Tucker's a sentimental fool? Is that what you're saying to yourself, David? No. Then you, you young'uns think you know better than to stick by the old traditional ways. Well, that's what you think you're plumb crazy. I'm going to get my wheelbarrow. <laughs> so Mr. Tucker and Mrs. Norton are a couple of sentimental Yankees. You uh, bet we are. And I'm proud of it. Oh, you are. Uh, I are, and I'm going to stop apologizing for it, too. Well, nobody said you should. Well, you had that look. Yep, I'm good and sentimental, and I'm a Yankee, too. And I'll be gall darned if it isn't a fine thing to be. <laughs> and if you ask me... I'd say with old Mr. Tucker, you're in pretty good company. Hand in hand with a chip off of the old Plymouth Rock itself. If ever there was a season when unexpected guests could be said to be expected, that's the Christmas season. No telling who may ring your doorbell. But you'll be ready for anyone, young or old, if you have lots of Coca-Cola cooling in the refrigerator. There's still time to bring a case home from the grocer's or service station. When you're getting the tree and last-minute supplies... Say, uh, what are them two young'uns whispering about, Mr. King? Oh, uh, a little private joke, Mr. Tucker? Uh, well, my ears was burning. I got a feeling I was in on the joke. Well, you know, ears burning, Mr. Tucker, mean compliments. So, uh, stop worrying. Worrying? Worrying? Who's worrying? Say, uh, young fellow, what's the news about the Norton's cow? She, uh, she's getting set to freshen up. I think she is, yes. Uh, you better stay around close tomorrow, Mr. Tucker. Better stay around close, you know, in a case of extreme uh, delicacy like uh, this. Uh, you uh, may be needed. Yes, uh, well, I'll be around. It's Christmas Eve tomorrow, too. <laughs> Wouldn't be a bad present for the Nortons if Majesty delivered us a heifer. Well, I better help my yule log along. I'll see you, son. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Tucker. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.